it. <laughs> Black. complete. Today I'm going to give you guys a complete rundown how prep has been going so far, an update, and I want to talk about training, obviously. Hey buddy! But before any of that, first we eat. So good. I'm obsessed with cream cheese. And I think it's because I was always told how bad it is for you by everybody. Now that I know that there are no good foods and bad foods, I am making up for lost time. Let's just not get old. All right, first order of business for today's prep update video. That's what we'll call this, prep update video. I am sitting at 114.6 pounds right now. I've only measured my glutes and my hips. I can kind of see that there's differences in my upper body and my thighs and my calves and stuff like that. I find that my, my hips and my glutes are most important for me to measure my progress when it comes to inches. So for my waist, I am at 25 inches and my glutes, they are at 36 inches, which is pretty awesome considering that typically I hold quite a bit in my glutes. So it seems that I have put on a little bit more muscle this year or I'm just holding on to it a little bit better so that's good my waist started out at 26 inches I believe so I've lost an inch in seven weeks and same with my glutes they were at 37 inches and now they're at 36 so I've lost an inch there as well so physique is coming along very well still seeing a nice slow steady decrease in the scale which is totally fine I do see fluctuations throughout the week but something that I've started doing and something that I'm going to do going forward and maybe a recommendation to you is to take the average weight that you have during the week. So not that I recommend stepping on the scale every single day, but if you have a healthy mindset where the scale doesn't mess with you and you're able to deal with the fluctuations, I would step on the scale every day then and take the average throughout the week. And that is typically a more accurate measure of what your actual body weight is. Or if you don't like stepping on the scale every day, maybe you do it every second day, just do it over a two week span and add up the amount of days that you did step on the scale and use that as your divider when you're taking your average. So that's basically it for my physique update. I am very happy with how things are going and we are just shy of 12 weeks out, which is crazy to think I've, it's only, I've only lost five pounds, but it's a tremendous difference and we are 12 weeks out, which most people are actually starting their prep right now. A lot of people will do a 12 week preps, which hey, you got to do what works good for you but for me I like to have extra time and obviously you can tell why because the scale has been giving me a hard time and it just allows you to have more time to make sure that you aren't doing anything drastically at the end to lose those last couple of pounds and to help ensure that you are holding on to as much muscle as you can because if you do diet too fast you can actually lose a lot of muscle that you've worked so hard for in the off season so you might as well go as slow 
as possible that you're able to fit with your schedule. So physique update, going well. training now. Firstly, cardio, everybody's favorite topic. I am still doing my three sessions every week of 20 minutes. This typically amounts to about 200 calories burnt depending on what I am using. Sometimes I will use the elliptical and sometimes I will use the Stairmaster. This is definitely going to depend on my energy levels. If I'm feeling a lot more energy and that I really just want to sweat it out and feel pretty good but fatigued afterwards, I'll step on the Stairmaster. I find that it is a lot more difficult, you can sweat a lot more, and you're probably going to burn a little bit more calories. I never look at the calories on the actual machine, they are tremendously <laughs> inaccurate. Just a little side note, if you are like tracking your calories, do not net out the calories that you are burning from your cardio. It's not accurate. But on the days that I'm just feeling a little bit more fatigued, maybe my hips are really tight and stuff like that, I will actually go on the elliptical. Now I want to take a minute today to talk about the elliptical. I think the elliptical has a really bad rap, and actually I think the elliptical for weightlifters is actually a really good form of cardio. Why? Because of the range of motion that your hips get. It's actually very similar to the range of motion that you would do when you are squatting. So if you jump on the elliptical for your warm-up, you're actually going to get your hips opening up as you probably want to before you go to squat. Now I think the elliptical gets a bad rap for people who are maybe agility athletes or they do like ninja warrior or they're hikers or long distance runners, stuff like that then yeah, do you know what? The elliptical probably isn't the best form of cardio for you to be doing just because it is low impact. There's an assistance factor with it. So by doing the elliptical, you're not really conditioning yourself to be ready for those high impact sports that you may be doing. Still not doing any cardio in the morning. Most of my cardio is done at the end of my workout. Make sure you are doing your cardio at the end of your workout versus the beginning of your workout because if you do it at the beginning of your workout, you're actually hurting your strength gains because you're really tiring yourself out and you'll probably see a decrease in strength due to the increased amount of fatigue that you are feeling after doing cardio. So if you are a strength athlete, make sure you're doing your cardio at the end of your workout. And training is still going very well. I'm still incorporating a full body day as well as a lower body and upper body day. I'm definitely starting to see a decrease in my strength, which is totally normal. It's expected when you diet down. So as my strength starts to go down I want to try to make as much strength as possible so by doing this I'll actually take longer rest periods just for my compound movements so today's workout let's quickly touch on that very quickly so exercise number one I started off with some good mornings for good mornings I just go under the bar like I went for a high bar squat there's no need to do a low bar squat here just because I'm not lifting a lot of weight when it comes to good mornings I don't want to put that much pressure on my back especially when you're leaning further forward and actually almost an identical movement to the Romania deadlift where you keep a slight bend in your knees drive your hips back and then squeeze your glutes and drag your heels through the floor to stand back up a lot of people think that this is a lower back exercise and while it does engage your lower back you should actually feel this more in your hamstrings and glutes if you are doing it properly so it's just a different transfer of weight from the Romanian deadlift so you're actually gonna hit your hamstrings a little bit more and then I moved on to just some step ups for these step ups I actually sometimes like to hold on to plates versus the dumbbells I find that they just rest a little bit better just at the tip of my fingertips and it's just a good way to kind of take a break from grip strength although that I think grip strength is very important especially if you're a power lifter but sometimes it's nice to just take a break and just focus on the movement versus trying to hold on to the dumbbells for dear life so I find that holding on to the plates just really allows you to just take that break while still having some weight when you do the actual movement so for step ups this one is definitely gonna target your quads but it also should actually hit your glutes as well at the top so when you step all the way up, if you add a little bit of an extra squeeze or, or just even a pause at the top, you should feel a little bit of an activation in your glutes, so something to consider the next time you do them. When it comes to glutes, like I've mentioned before, I really like to do a variety of stuff. We sit on our butts all the time, so it's very difficult to tell what exercises actually target and activate our glutes because everybody is so differently, so experiment with different exercises just so you can get a feel 
feeling and understanding what's really going to help activate your glutes. So after that, we moved on to an incline dumbbell press. This one just targets your chest. You'll also feel it in the front of your delts as well, just a little bit. So this one's very similar to how you would perform a flat bench, where you want to tuck your elbows not too, too much, otherwise you will get more front delt activation, but you don't want to flare your elbows out too far. So kind of a moderate tuck in your elbows, whereas when you do it on the flat bench, you're going to tuck your elbows just a little bit more. And when you come down, just making sure that your forearms are parallel to the ground and your forearms aren't collapsing in towards your chest you want to make sure they stay strong and out like this throughout the entire movement so when you're pushing up you really want to pretend that you're like squeezing your chest together like that so as you can see like my muscles right here are activating when I squeeze forward like that so versus just pushing up like this I don't know if you can tell but my chest isn't activated all that much but I can do the movement but if you come down and then you push up like this you can see that my chest gets much more activated when you're focusing on the squeeze next was just some dumbbell lateral raises I've talked about this before I don't want to do any overkill when it comes to shoulders but just when you're doing any type of lateral raises make sure that you are doing a bunch of variations. Lateral raises are an excellent exercise to making sure that you get the mid side of the delt. So by doing this properly and doing a bunch of variations, you're really going to help ensure optimal recruitment for that area. This next exercise I actually got from one of my girlfriends. It's just a single arm upright rope. I like it with the single arm, so you just come up and making sure that your arm is in a complete straight line like this. And I just like holding the plate a little bit more. All right, and the last exercise is a dumbbell kickback so this one is just gonna work your triceps as you can tell this one is a single joint movement so by this I mean that I am only moving one joint throughout the range of motion and this is my elbow so when you are doing isolation work like this you really don't need to worry about lifting super heavy you just really want to focus on the squeeze and the mind muscle connection for isolation movements my muscle connection is extremely important so don't worry about lifting super heavy I am only lifting 10 pounds here so when you're doing this one as you can tell my elbow is up very high and I am really going through an entire range of motion starting all the way at the front of the delt and then coming all the way up and as you can tell my elbow is higher than my back so by doing this you are really gonna feel that activation in your triceps so much more to the point where you really don't need to lift any heavier than, than necessary so give those a try and really just focus on the squeeze whenever you're doing isolation work for an example like people compliment Kyle's arms all the time and and he lifts lighter than me when it comes to training his biceps and his triceps. He is the king at mastering his mind muscle connection when it comes to doing bicep curls and this has really allowed him to grow his arms because of that so definitely don't eagle lift you don't need to be swinging same with triceps you don't need to be swinging in order to do the the movement it's a single joint isolation movement so just really focus on those mind muscle connections whenever you're doing any type of exercise like that so that's it for training you guys this year is something that I kind of talked about on Instagram a few days ago. I went off to tell people that I really wasn't feeling prepped this year and because I was feeling that way when I was doing cardio one night last week, I, I was really thinking about my initial reasoning for wanting to do a competition again this year. And to be honest, my initial reason was because I simply qualified. Whereas last year, my purpose for stepping on stage was not only to get out of my comfort zone, but to show people that flexible dieting works. You can lose weight, you can see positive body composition results by eating basically whatever you want. But this year, I just wanted to do it because I qualified. And I decided that wasn't enough. And that was my reasoning for really not just feeling prep this year so far at all. So because that was my initial purpose for wanting to prep, I decided that it was time to create a new purpose for prep. And if you guys have been following this series so far, you guys will know that I've been struggling. Yeah, I'm, I'm upbeat and positive and happy with you guys, but I've been struggling just not wanting to do it. 
I'm missing out on certain events. Birthdays are coming up. Kyle's birthday is a month before our prep. That's three years in a row that Kyle has been on prep during his birthday. This is my second year in a row being on prep during his birthday. And it's just making me mad and angry and upset when I know this is self-inflicted. But having said all that, having realized all that, I decided to have a mindset shift. And my purpose for competing this year now is to honor the struggle. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, maybe I can't do everything that I wanna do, but the most successful people in this world have a willingness to struggle. And I wanna show people that. So many people will just quit and give up the second things get tough when it comes to them chasing their dreams. If you want something, it's gonna be tough. There are gonna be sacrifices. There are gonna be hard times and times that you just wanna say fuck it and quit. But by honoring that struggle and seeing that commitment through, Man, will it pay in dividends. I know it will. So that's my purpose this year, is to show you guys that and to show you the benefit of honoring that struggle. So before we sign out the video today, I just want to quickly say thank you guys so much for your continuous support. I have got some regular people commenting on here and it seems like we're starting to create a community, which is amazing. It's so awesome to see such positive people at my channel, so I really appreciate your guys' support. Because of that, I wanna ask you guys for a huge favor. If you can, share some of my videos to people that you know and maybe it'll help them out a little bit so we can start creating this community for us. I'm really trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers, hopefully by my show. YouTube is really hard to gain exposure and without continuous exposure, I'm unable to continue to create videos. So your guys' support allows me to continue to make these quality videos for you guys. Make sure you guys are getting some value valuable information, learning, and having some fun along the way. So if you guys don't mind, I would really appreciate it. And if you guys are new to my channel, you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do, okay? So hit that subscribe button. Thanks you guys so much for your support. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one.